Good afternoon and good morning. Welcome to the Tell Mike Webisar Webinar Series 22, hosted by the National Veterans Women's Coalition. Thank you for joining us today. This webinar is sponsored by BAA Systems and Fifth North America. Thank you for their sponsorship. Just a few notes. Uh, the golf tournament, our charity golf tournament is two weeks away and we got limited slots left. So you gonna go for a round of golf and network with your fellow business owners, please sign up through www.nvspc.com. And please, I will be there. <laughs> I decided to go, I won't golf. So yeah, just, just come out and join us and for a good time. And again, our awards gala, our first ever awards gala is on, on September 13th at 5.30 at the Army Navy Country Club in Alton, Virginia. As you may have known, we used to have the award ceremony during our conference at VETS, but with, since it's been so big, we decided to have an awards gala. So please, if you wanna sign up and join us that evening for a night of awards, please sign up for an awards gala. And if you miss any of the Trial Mike webinar series, any of our special events and testimonials, you can find us on YouTube. So please subscribe today. So this webinar is an hour and 15 minutes and is being recorded. Or the slides and recording were sent to all attendees by Monday. If you have any questions, please type on the right side on the control panel. And again, my name is Earl Morgan. I am Program Director for NBSPC. This is an exciting webinar we have for you today. So today we have Mr. Jonathan Bradley. He, he's from the Outreach Group, Small Business Office of Export and Imports, Bank of the United States. And we have Brian Beams from, from Vet, Vetsco Global, uh, team member from the U.S. Commercial Services, U.S. Department of Commerce, International Trade Administration. And he's gonna introduce a special guest later today. So Brian, why don't you go ahead and take this away? Thanks, Earl. I appreciate it. And um, thanks for everybody's time and, and spending uh, about an hour with us today. Um, just before I kick it off, it's really, folks, an informative uh, webinar about your federal resources. Um, and it's paramount to, to just know what's going on as a business owner and what your opportunities uh, are out there. Um, my name is, yep, is Brian Beams. I am a what is known as a Senior International Trade Specialist with the U.S. Department of Commerce, uh, trickle down into the International Trade Administration, and then you'll find what is called the U.S. and Foreign Commercial Service. We are the export, uh, excuse me, the export and uh, trade and investment arm of your federal government. Um, a couple minutes on the Vets, uh, the Vetsco Global uh, here at ITA. Um, Myself, I'm a active duty or five uh, year active duty veteran veteran of the U.S. Air Force. Um, I served in Bosnia, uh, cleaned up Kosovo, uh, Iraq, and also Afghanistan. Uh, then they let me out. Um, so I then transitioned to business school. Uh, thought it was a good idea to get licensed as a stockbroker, bond broker in 2007, where everybody can get a chuckle. Um, and then uh, that lasted for about three years. And then I transitioned to the State Department where I was with the um, basically diplomatic security. Uh, I, I worked at the US uh, United States mission to the UN across the street from the UN headquarters in New York. Uh, then I found this job with Commerce. Um, or again, I'm gonna get into a little bit more of the commercial service in a couple slides, but um, the Vetsco Global Initiative is exactly a group of about a dozen veterans in the U.S. Commercial Service that about 10 years ago identified that uh, there should be an initiative, a support group to help what we like to call the underserved business community, specifically the veteran business community. Uh, myself and Murat Muftari, he's my colleague in the Michigan office. I'm in the New Jersey office. Um, he's, uh, I think, well, he was a Green Beret. Um, that's, that's about all we need to know. So we put our heads together and have been sort of uh, educating and informing the uh, veteran business community, all things exporting. And you'll, you'll know a little bit more after I get through the U.S. Commercial Service slides to what we actually do, because we didn't reinvent the wheel. We're just 
um, reaching out to the vet veteran business community in the sense of identify, locate, identify, educate, and support is really uh, our goal. And to get as many POBs that are export ready or hope to be export ready, exporting as 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 when they're ready. Um, next slide. All right. Uh, the U.S. Commercial Service. The U.S. Commercial Service is about 40 years old. It branched off from the State Department. They had a commercial um, tentacle, if you will, uh, up to about 1979, 1980, and uh, commercial sections. Those who do know, uh, we are in uh, embassies and consulates around the world. Not everyone, but uh, we, we we pack a punch for small up to large uh, large companies that are US owned. That's the only qualifier we really have. Earl, if you can move to the next slide. Um, I kind of mentioned about, we have about 100 offices overseas as a whole, 80 countries, uh, approximately 2000 folks uh, that make up the um, US Foreign Commercial Service. Uh, think about two sides of the house. One is the domestic office where I am in Northern New Jersey. Uh, about 100 offices domestically as well um, in the network or in the U.S. field. Then, of course, we have headquarters where we have resources and leadership there. Then the other side of the house, as I mentioned, the U.S. commercial service offices or the commercial sections inside your U.S. embassies and consulates. Um, a little bit of structure on how they are. Uh, yes, U.S. diplomats, uh, also known as commercial officers, they cover down and manage and lead what we hire local local citizens or locally engaged staff as we call them um, they why well they know the language of said market wherever they are or economy uh, they nine times out of ten worked in that industry that they're assigned to and uh, they know book of contacts and procedures and understanding how to be uh, enter a market and expand in the market um, Earl next slide please What we focus on, I mentioned a little earlier, but small, medium-sized companies uh, that have 51% U.S. content. What does that mean? Really, folks, if you're a U.S. company and you are manufacturing in the U.S., you qualify. Um, there's a little bit of a, uh, a mathematical formula if, if we have to get down to if you're close to qualifying for the resources I'm, I'm going to be speaking about. However, we're not out to twist anybody's arm. Uh, we're not a regulatory agency. Uh, we are pure business, pure commerce, and introducing exporters and only exporters. We are not an importer. Uh, we have nothing to do with importing. Um, however, if you're a U.S. company and you manufacture in, I'll pick on a country. Uh, let's pick on Vietnam today. Um, they, we can't help you. you ha it's about Congress really mandates U.S. jobs, U.S. manufacturing or those companies that qualify when it's a service, uh, a service that they can offer that is exportable. Um, next slide, Earl. Thank you, sir. Um, open to the world, four uh, verticals that we, that, we, that we do here. Uh, export counseling, market intelligence, business matchmaking is really our flagship. And then it, it happens, folks, if you're in business long enough, you'll need commercial diplomacy uh, or uh, diplomacy or or um, advocacy as well, and I'll, I'll, I'll get into that as well. Um, these slides will be forwarded to you, as I think Earl mentioned earlier. So here's a little bit more sort of what we do or who we partner with. Um, you can find all these things. This is really more of a pitch to a couple things to take away. Well, if you got your pen and paper ready, it should be trade.gov, again, trade.gov. You'll find everything about the U.S. Commercial Service and our partners on what they handle, such as uh, who's going to speak later, Jonathan, with the Export-Import Bank of the United States. Uh, then also SBA has an has a um, international arm, and they they offer products uh, to small business, of course. Um, things. So I mentioned a little bit of financing. Jonathan's really going to drill down on it, which is nice, good cover. Um, we'll find partners. We'll uh, again, if it's diplomacy or advocacy cases where you're the you're the um, you're not being represented or you're not being heard in a foreign market, 
uh, and there's some unethical illegal business practices going on, we'll reach out on your behalf uh, and other US companies that might be uh, bidding uh, as well. So I'll get into that a little bit more. Um, we steer you towards uh, accounting, um, legal uh, shipping and logistics, right? We're not the thought leaders there. We uh, operate in a world of export community, uh, if either is it the states, uh, in New Jersey, we're very active in both the North and South Jersey. There's two offices, for example, and we partner up with what is called the District Export Council. There might be a slide on that, but another thing to write down, uh, the District Export Council in your state, you might, depending on your state, you might have one or two. There's about 50 or 60 nationwide. Uh, they're volunteer uh, group of U.S. exporters and those folks that, uh, that are that work in uh, the exporting space. Earl, next slide, please. Oh, and one more slide, I kind of went over that. There we go. Export counseling, folks, um, we're here to counsel you. We're not here to build out your international business strategy to deploy or, or, or to enter in a foreign market. Uh, there's a lot of private questions that or decisions that have to be made. However, we're there to inform you and help you along the way. Um, some of those ways, as you can see, as I early kind of, or just sort of mentioned, if it's regulatory or legal issues, we don't provide legal legal um, expertise. However, we'll get you in touch or understand, for you to understand if there's a legal issue, either it could be attorneys in the market that you're having a, an issue with, or that you're just wanting to be proactive and know legal ramifications. There's other ways to go. Um, when it comes to the counseling we provide, there's the market intelligence side I'll get to, but country commercial guides are paramount. They're another thing you might want to write down, country commercial guides on trade.gov. Uh, you can find a lot of things out before you even step or call or video conference somebody in the market you're interested in with our commercial guides. Um, and again, as I mentioned, shipping and logistics, where we come in, we'll work with the Bis uh, Bureau of Industry and Security. They are our sister agency, exactly what they sound like. They help with uh, regulatory um, policy. They make it, uh, they alter it. They work with the DOD uh, and the State Department when it comes to the folks that maybe sell dual use products when it comes to ITAR, if you hear those terms. Um, if you're in that space, you've probably heard. You, you sell weapons or something along those things. We love uh, made products. There's just a right way and a wrong way to do things, and we're there to, to support you and guide you. Um, and then, of course, tariff codes, uh, harmonized system codes. Folks, you want to speak to us or, or someone in the know, there's stories. I won't go too deep, but there's many stories where an experienced longtime exporter was had the wrong harmonized system codes down. They were paying tariffs where they never had to. Trust us, governments around the world, including yours, will not uh, pay you back or or, or say, hey, uh, you're giving us too much money or, or things like that. Um, so you, you really want to be informed and that's another thing that we can support with. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, um, market intelligence, I touched on. I touch on country commercial guides. guides. I like to echo things that, um, that you should really think about as you're, many of you I would, I would assume are, are early entrepreneurs, maybe just getting into business. Maybe hell, maybe they just maybe just got out of the military. Uh, thanks for the service. Let's let's continue to work, right? Um, we we help everyone, and we want to see everyone succeed. There's models that you can look up. There's plans and ways to go, or you just kind of fall into it. Well, market intelligence, either in the research stage of your of your life cycle, or if it's later on and you're mature, these. These, we feel that the, uh, the market intelligence tools and resources on trade.gov um, are, are invaluable, really. It's amazing. Um, I always learn something new, but specifically country commercial guides. What services, uh, one of the first services I'm going to be speaking about is our background checked. Um, we have a different name for it. It's an uh, international company profile. It could be partial lookup. It could be full uh, inquiries, like knocking on the door where my colleagues overseas at those commercial sections will uh, come on in, knock knock on the door, lift the hood, kick the tires, and someone that you're interested in either selling to or partnering with 
in a forum. Um, trade data, tons of trade data, but not not they've done such a good way, uh, uh, such a good job um, getting big data and 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 getting it to a manageable level. You can find with your harmonized system codes or other codes what you're selling and where who's who's buying what and where. Um, you can always talk to your international trade specialist about that. Uh, Earl, can you jump to the next slide, please? Thank you, sir. Business matchmaking, I, I mentioned it is our flagship service or product products. Um, this is where your U.S. embassies and consulates really work out. And of course, I'd like to say folks domestically like myself uh, are, are there to support. Um, your, your small business, you have a export product. We determined, let's say, or you already know that, hey, Canada will buy this stuff, whatever it is, ministry, uh, consumers, uh, business to business, whatever it may be, we have services where it's initial market checks where we're tiptoeing in because they either a we don't know that much about a market that or a product or something you're bringing in, or we, or you don't, and we want to make sure that we're matching, we're giving you market intelligence, customized market intelligence, to intelligence, and then we're matching you with those entities you want to meet abroad. Maybe it's ministries. Yeah, you're looking for an end user, or excuse me, a um, an agent or a reseller distributor in some countries you have to have one to carry your flag um, we'll help you vet those and that goes into our partner searches uh, and then of course some of you might even have heard of us before and, and the gold key matchmaking service is probably the most known that is the, all the all the services take generally four five six weeks uh, but on that six week with a gold key you already plan uh, to travel and then we set up those meetings four or five uh, potential resellers or agents again you need to speak to people in the in a ministry of energy or the ministry of defense or something uh, we're to set those meetings for you um, we don't buy your ticket we don't pay for your hotel room but we'll help you with where to stay where not to stay tra uh, transportation uh, if you need an interpreter things like that uh, we're gonna square you away you'll be ready to pitch and ask your questions you, you'll you'll be shipped to kind of around by our commercial specialists and officers by design. So you're just uh, thinking about and, and, and about to engage uh, in, in, the, in a, a very fruitful, hopefully, uh, discussions. Um, trade missions, sure, we have trade missions. Business trade missions, we have official ones where Secretary of Commerce will, Commerce will, will come, the president will come at times and introduce 12 US companies, let's say energy sector in Africa. One, one initiative we have is Power Africa. It's exactly what President Obama did. Um, we have, I, I kind of mentioned the in-country promotions as well, but also trade shows, another takeaway. If you're at an international trade show and you see a U.S. pavilion, chances are that's U.S. commercial service. There's going to be U.S. companies there, obviously, ex export or exhibiting, uh, and we do that. We do, wow, we do a lot of trade shows <clears throat> for our agency. The law <laughs> excuse me, the large ones that have, um, of course, export appeal. So if it's domestic or, of course, international is a no-brainer. Excuse me. Next slide, Earl. Um, commer <coughs> Sorry, everybody. Commercial diplomacy. Um, I mentioned advocacy. One moment. <coughs> uh, mentioned diplomacy. There's also advocacy. Um, really, we don't want to help. We don't want to inter uh, interfere, but we will help uh, companies that, again, realize they're <clears throat> losing my voice. I apologize. That need our help in in a foreign market <clears throat> where it's uh, government procurement <clears throat> and you're not being being heard, so to speak. Amazing how my voice just went off. Um, we also have folks in D.C. with trade problems, <coughs> barriers, you name it, will help. Um, and that really summarizes, thank goodness, since my voice is going, the four uh, verticals of what we offer. Um, last slide, Earl, for me, um, is there's my name, there's my contact information. Nice that my voice is slowly coming back. Uh, but if I can leave you with just on the commercial service. Uh, Earl's <coughs> hopefully going to pass on that 
we have an export assessment that you can that you can uh, go on trade.gov, uh, and then how to find your local trade specialist. Those two things. Those Um, resources for for at least the U.S. Commercial Service. Um, that really wraps up for me. Is there uh, and Earl, you wanted to do questions right after each uh, each speaker, so I'm happy to take any questions. <clears throat> yes. Go ahead and type in the questions block on the right hand of your screen. We we'll just wait a few minutes before we get on to the next speaker. All right. Very good. People are shy. People have been shy the last couple of weeks. <laughs> That's all right, folks. <clears throat> this is your time. There's no silly questions. Um, there really isn't. And again, um, if if I don't answer them or if I didn't cover it, there, there's of course more, more that we offer. <clears throat> How, <clears throat> excuse me. However, when you reach out to your trade specialist and say hi, even if you're not in business, just say hi, know them, uh, and to uh, to include. Um, when you go overseas, if you're not engaged with us, but you're overseas and you're going to a show or something, reach out to the commercial section in that country. Again, you want to kind of know your local trade specialist. Now, that's our job or my job to say, hey, Mrs. Jablonski's coming over uh, to my colleague overseas. She's going to um, Auto Mechanica or something like that, car show. And I'm going to uh, let folks in Berlin and Frankfurt know. So, so, so you're geared up and updated on what resources are there other than just exhibiting, which again, it's important. However, uh, you know, you got free time sometimes, uh, jump out, do some uh, breakout sessions with us and so on and so forth. Uh, any questions pop up yet, Earl? No questions popped up. All right. um, let's go ahead and go to the next speaker. Let's keep this party going. Yeah, sounds right. All right, let me uh, introduce Jonathan. Um, I recently met Jonathan Brady uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, however, what his agency does and how they focus on underserved business communities is something that we, the U.S. Commercial Service is behind. Um, we are on, we are now focusing the last couple of years, which is nice. But Jonathan will tell you um, who he is, what's his agency's main mission is, and then how he's uh, tasked and he's a leader of helping out underserved business communities. Uh, Jonathan is a business development specialist for the minority and women-owned business uh, outreach group. Uh, however, he covers down on veterans. And uh, Jonathan, why don't uh, you take it away, sir? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Great to be on today's platform with you. Are you able to hear me? Yep, we hear you just fine. Okay, very good. Thanks again uh, to Brian. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on this platform with the U.S. Commercial Service. And uh, as Brian mentioned, he also wears a lot of hats, including Vetsco Global. And I want to thank our uh, event organizer, Earl, Earl Morgan, uh, NBSBC. Uh, Earl's in the role of moderator today. And, and thanks for giving us this opportunity to reach out to your members. Um, so. Let me talk about XM Bank. Uh, again, my name is Jonathan Brady, as Brian mentioned, and I am a business development specialist in the Minority and Women-Owned Business Outreach Group, or MWOB uh, division at the Export-Import Bank of the United States. That's our full name, but uh, most people call us XM for short. Um, so today, I'd like to give you an overview of XM Bank and what we do and describe to you how we can be of service to U.S. exporters. Describe to you how um, our, our services uh, provide assistance. Next slide, please. So by way of introduction, XM Bank is a federal government agency and we do serve as the export credit agency of the United States. We were established more than 80 years ago in the 1930s, in fact, and Washington, D.C. is the location of our headquarters, supported by 12 regional offices. Our mission, simply put, XM's mission is to create and sustain jobs by increasing U.S. export sales. Next slide. Now, let me talk a little bit about the MWOB uh, outreach group. Um, I'd like to... Um, Tell you a little bit about us. We're a dedicated team of export counselors and finance specialists who work with minority owned, women owned, veteran owned, and of course business owners with disabilities. 
um, to help them gain access to XM financing. Essentially, we are devoted to the target audiences listed here, as you can see in the middle of the screen, various groups belonging to the underserved, underutilized business community. Next slide, please. It's safe to say exporting can be one of the best ways to expand your business. Why should you export? Three principal reasons I'd like to highlight, as you can see here. Number one, wider access to more consumers and more businesses. Number two, diversifying market opportunities and diversifying your business portfolio. You may be looking beyond the United States uh, and you'd like to have a mix of both domestic and international. And three, in some cases, minority-owned businesses and veteran-owned businesses are uniquely qualified to connect with export markets based on previous experience, uh, previous exposure to a foreign country or a connection to the homeland, as the case may be. So if you are doing well domestically, just imagine how well you could be doing if you were exporting. And by not exporting, you may be hindering or limiting your potential business growth. Next slide, Earl. Now, where does global business take place? Let's look at uh, this major statistic. Approximately 95% of the world's consumers and nearly two thirds of global purchasing power are located outside the United States. Food for thought as you begin or continue to explore export markets and consider diversifying your business portfolio. Next slide. There is risk associated with exporting. Businesses involved in international trade have to deal not only with risks locally, but also other business development risks, such as shipping, intellectual property, intellectual property protection, foreign exchange, um, and last but not least, credit risk. And that's why a small percentage, as you, as you can see here, only 1% of US businesses export. Exim Bank products and solutions mitigate or reduce risk for exporters, and I'll explain why as I move along. Next slide, Earl. Now, because we are the export credit agency of the, U of the US, our financing makes the difference between winning or losing a sale or a contract. You should know that our products minimize risk for the exporter as well as the importer of foreign buyer. XM financing levels the playing field for US companies competing for global sales, and it fills gaps or supplements the private sector, private sector lending, and private sector insurance offerings. Next slide, please. So let me set up uh, the two products that I'd like to mention briefly today. Um, we're going to talk about working capital loan guarantees and then export credit insurance. These are short, these are products in support of short-term transactions. And um, one way to look at them is through the lens of pre-export and post-export activities. Working capital loan guarantees are pre-export because they support you, you're trying to fulfill orders, and it's usually pre-shipment if you have a product, for example, to export. So it's a pre-export finance solution. Then we'll move to the export credit insurance, which is considered post-export. So without further ado, first of all, our working capital loan guarantees provide the funds you need to fulfill orders. And the loan proceeds can be used to purchase the finished product that you may be exporting, um, raw materials, additional labor, overhead fees, any costs, any legitimate costs associated with the export transaction. Now, how does it work? XM provides a 90% loan backing guarantee to lenders for export related loans, which makes lenders more willing and more comfortable to finance export transactions. The loans are either transaction specific or can be a revolving line of credit. The term's generally one year and can extend up to three years. There's no minimum or maximum amount for XM, but you still need to work with your lender, uh, the financial institution, to determine what their expectations are and, and uh, the eligibility criteria, the qualifications for the loan itself. Next slide, please. So now we'll turn to the other case, a post-export finance solution known as export credit insurance. Let's go over the benefits. Um, and I should say, this is what we're most known for at the Export Credit Agency of the United States. Basically, the export credit insurance removes the risk associated with exporting. It protects you if your customer doesn't pay because of two kinds of risk, commercial or political. Let me give you some examples. 
um, if your buyer loses his or her import license or commits fraud or under political risk, there may be civil unrest in the destination country or an outbreak of war. These are just a few examples of situations in which you're covered by XM Bank should they occur. The policy is also a bargaining or what we call a sales tool because you can offer credit in the form of open account terms to your buyers. This benefits you as well as your buyer because you're not requiring cash in advance. In these circumstances, your customer may increase their order with you knowing that you're not expecting payment for let's say 30, 60, or 90 days, whatever terms you agree to. Now, a third uh, benefit is that the policy can be a financing tool because your insured foreign receivables may be added to the, your borrowing base, providing you with access to financing. XM's insurance enhances the quality of your firm's balance sheet. Think of it this way, your foreign receivables become insured, allowing your company to borrow against those receivables, giving you access to financing. Now let's, uh, let's go to the next slide, Earl. Let's look at a representative case. We're still on export credit insurance here. This is a transaction utilizing the insurance product. Starting on the left-hand side, you've identified your customer, the foreign buyer, and you apply for export credit insurance. When approved, you offer credit terms. You're moving from cash in advance to credit terms or open account. And your foreign buyer, he or she agrees to those terms. Now moving forward, step four, five, and six, the product is shipped, the shipment gets reported, and the premium's paid at that time. And that's what's so great about this insurance product. You pay the premiums only when you ship the product, not monthly as most insurance policies require. So let's move to the next slide. At XM, yes, we support a variety of industries, as you can see here, from manufacturing to power generation to renewable energy and agribusiness. And I want to stop for a moment and talk about services while we're here uh, and, and focus on services and services exports. XM Bank provides support to a wide range of services, everything from IT consulting to architecture, construction, and engineering expertise, and others, some other examples, healthcare, medical personnel, and various forms of education and training, uh, high, all highly exportable. So if you are a business and you provide a service and don't have an actual product that you're exporting, don't dismiss receiving support from XM. You are in the right place as a service provider. Let's go to the next slide. So tools for exporters, I do want to mention the country limitation schedule. We are open for cover in more than 180 countries, as you can see here. Open for cover means we support U.S. exporters in countries um, to some extent or to a uh, full extent. However, I'd like, I do like to advise audience members and clients to view the country limitation schedule when they start exporting or continue uh, to expand their export business to see whether we're open, that is providing coverage in the country of destination and for how long, and whether it's a public sector or private sector transaction. So if you go to the country limitation schedule at xm.gov, um, you may just be negotiating with, with your foreign buyer. You can take a look at to what extent XM provides coverage, see the tenor or time frame, it's short term, medium term, long term, and the type of transaction, because we do um, provide coverage in some cases uh, to both the public sector and private sector, but you have to look it up and see um, which country uh, which country is of interest to you and, and the degree of coverage by XM Bank. Now, we are a federal government agency at XM, so we do have some restrictions as to the transactions we can provide support for. And I do want to mention the U.S. content policy before moving on. Uh, we have a U.S. content requirement for our clients. The products must contain at least 51% or majority of U.S. content for short-term transactions. That's up, up to one year. And for medium-term transactions, generally one to five years, the U.S. content increases and must be at least 85%. So that's the U.S. content policy for XM clients. Let's go to the next slide. 
Now, export readiness. Are you ready to export? This is something that Brian Beams uh, touched upon, our previous speaker. Uh, the key question here is, are you ready to export? In other words, do you have a product or service with a specialty, a uniqueness, or, or a niche that will allow uh, or draw customers to your business? Which countries should you select for exporting? Maybe you should consider partnering or teaming with another US company until you are ready. The MWOB division, the team I'm on, is here to help you with these and other export readiness topics, as you can see here. So we're happy to work with you and provide a roadmap so we can steer you in the right direction in case you're not quite ready for the XM authorization. We are here to be a resource and complement the services of the other federal agencies we work with. Next slide, please. So let's look at additional resources before I close uh, my presentation. XM Bank is a relatively small agency and we rely on the resources I'm about to share with you to help us raise awareness about exports and XM uh, trade finance solutions. First of all, let's go with our insurance brokers at the top. Our brokers are paid for by XM and they are of no cost to you, the exporter, of little cost. Um, and at XM, we strongly encourage you to use an insurance broker. Um, a broker can assist you in the application process, maintenance of the policy, filing claims, if the need arises, and all at no or little cost to you. A, a list of brokers registered with XM can be found on XM's website under the insurance broker locator. Now let me talk a little about the REP program in the middle, Regional Export Promotion Program, uh, or REP members as these organizations at, um, at the state and local levels. They can assist you in raising awareness about XM. The REP members play a vital role in international business planning, export counseling, educational pro programming, and getting businesses export ready. Definitely seek out a REP organization close to you. They're located all over, all over the United States and listed on our website under the rep locator. You can search by state and locate the one that's closest to you. And then finally, let me talk about the DA lenders or delegated authority lenders. Um, they have, uh, they've entered into a master guarantee agreement with XM to finance export related loans. Our DA lenders are a valuable resource and you can locate them on the website as well at XM.com. Most of the major banks are delegated authority lenders with XM. And in fact, we work with financial institutions of all sizes in support of working capital programs. So I encourage you to visit the site, select the lender of interest, and also the contact person identified with that lender. That is the person who's already knowledgeable of and well-versed in XM programs. So those are the three major resources I wanted to identify um, before closing out my uh, presentation this afternoon. Let's go to the final slide, Earl. There should be one more slide. Oh, sorry, Stay Connected XM. You can see here a variety of ways you can follow us and learn more about export solutions. And the XM blog uh, in the middle, you can see grow.xm.gov is a great resource to learn more about uh, trade finance solutions and exporting in general. Um, we have a team of experts or experts who are contributing articles each week uh, on a weekly basis to this blog. So definitely something to follow and learn more about uh, how we support U.S. exporters. Uh, and then uh, the final slide, I believe, is next. Uh, Earl, let's move to the next slide. And here's my contact information. If you'd like to schedule a consultation, please feel free to reach out to me, and we can. Uh, do a deeper dive on one of the topics, um, and I'm happy to set aside some time to uh, uh, do a consultation. So keep us in mind at the MWOB division. Uh, we're here to be a resource, and no matter where you are in your business development cycle, new to export, beginning export, exporter, or current exporter, feel free to reach out, and uh, we'll, we'll set aside the time to uh, do a consultation. So. On that note, I'm going to turn it back to Brian, um, who will introduce our next speaker. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Jonathan. 
Uh, we'll just wait a couple minutes for questions. Or uh, Earl, are there any questions in the queue? Yes, there are two questions for me. I can answer them both with one answer. Um, looks like everybody's looking for the recording of this presentation and the slides. They will be sent to all attendees by Monday. Just a reminder, Monday, you check your email and you would get the recording of the recording of this presentation and the slides. That's the only two questions that I have. Okay. I guess we'll just, how about we then just keep moving? That sound all right? Uh, keep moving. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, thanks again, Jonathan, appreciate it. Uh, Thank you. Uh, next speaker and uh, really uh, get into some more meat and potatoes of exporting and really give you a, uh, the audience an, ex an experience uh, that you will hopefully do. Uh, this gentleman, uh, he is CEO of Night Vision Technology Solutions. Uh, his name is Joe Jansen. He uh, leads his operation. He's a veteran owned a small business. He recently earned or, or was awarded uh, SBA's New England and Rhode Island Exporter of the Year. We asked him to come on, uh, tell his story from military to then the business. We have some questions then. We'll ask uh, Joe uh, after he develop, uh, provides a little bio of himself or overview and uh, hopefully a lot of the information is uh, fruitful for the guests and, or the audience. Joe? Hi. All right. Good. Hello, everyone. <laughs> um, good day. Well, listen, um, I, I'm happy to be here. And uh, I'll give a little background on myself. I'm, uh, my name's Joe Jansen. I'm uh, founder and CEO of uh, Night Vision Technology Solutions. We're um, currently located in Jamestown, Rhode Island, um, on an island. Uh, but we're moving to a new facility, larger facility in Quonset. Ground, which is uh, about 20 minutes from here. Um, um, my background, initially military background, as um, I'm ex Coast Guard uh, and uh, spent uh, close to five years in the Coast Guard. Um, initially stationed on an icebreaker um, with deployments to Antarctica, Operation Deep Freeze, uh, North Pole, um, uh, several other deployments on the breaker and then transition to uh search and rescue station uh castle hill where we conducted upwards and up to about 500 sorties uh, so a big transition for me going from the shipboard life to small boat operations dealing with the community uh, anyway that was a great experience for me um stayed in rhode island uh, after my uh, time was up in the coast guard and uh basically stayed in the marine industry um, around boats and, uh, and electronics, opened up my own rep, rep company, uh, represented a lot of um, different manufacturers in navigational electronics and shipboard applications, gave me a good foundation of, of equipment on vessels. I uh, had that for a number of years um, and then founded um, NBTS as a business developing camera systems uh, transition from my marine business to this and first first business actually was um, a marine application and uh, go ahead. no I, I didn't mean to cut you off I thought you were closing go ahead continue no that's that's my background as far as uh, work, how I began and uh, we're better own small business here. Uh, we manufacture and develop uh, camera systems for both maritime and ground-based uh, applications. Um, part of that was, um, you know, is, you know, how does the military um, help us, help help my uh, getting into this business? Uh, one thing it, it for sure, it helped me with some of the zillions of acronyms <laughs> that are used in both the government and the military, uh, albeit a little bit, but it gave me a head start. Um, but uh, but being an operator in in, in the military and Coast Guard, um, it also gave me appreciation for the operators um, and. Uh, and knowing that they're key to important that any equipment that you do provide to the US government, uh, someone's lives are you know, depending on it to work. And uh, and also you can get a lot of good feedback from the operators in the military on product design. 
So that's really helped me a lot in that, in that regard. No, that's great. Um, you know, it's probably the same question that you're adding to, but I'll, I'll state it. How did your military experience enable you to gain uh, those like skill sets before you launched your own business? <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Okay. Hey. I, I think I think when you're in the military, certainly, uh, and everybody can attest to that. It's like you know, you, you you get a certain amount of training, but you know, you have to apply what you've learned and uh, and those processes and systems uh, in in order to be safe and also um, and execute on a deliverable. So you know, perhaps that that gave me that gave me a great amount of help. Um, and learning into this and also understanding the military church culture since the bulk of our business is to um you know military um and commercial applications abroad uh, I, I appreciate that i can say that the veteran businesses i work with uh and i have been uh, on the phones with joe listening in as uh, some of my other team members have have supported him internationally um, and I think even Joe mentioned this actually a little while ago. Uh, you know, the the quick the ability to when you're speaking to and if you're selling products or services to a local government and equivalent foreign military or DOD, their equivalent, you'll be you'll be able to build rapport quicker than uh, a non-military or a non-veteran. Uh, I've seen that time and time again. You just kick off, and and life is about relationships. So. If you're thinking that exporting, you're on, you're listening to this webinar, and you're thinking exporting is, uh, is, is just too much. Think again. Talk to Jonathan. Review, and because you, if you're out of the military or currently in, you've been trained up on what you need to succeed, and you'll just put time, knowledge, and experience in, and you, you'll get all that. Um, Joe, moving to just exporting specifically. Uh, can you share your first export transaction and which country was it uh, did you export to? And then also a couple of challenges or maybe successes that you got from uh, that first uh, trial and error uh, market you entered. It's good to learn as you go, you know, it, it's, but our, our first export was uh, probably bigger than we wanted to uh, take on initially, but uh, was uh, with the with the Greek Coast Guard, Hellenic Coast Guard, and we um, we won a tender with eight other international bidders, uh, and uh, okay. we as a U.S. manufacturer, we were there to supply uh, camera systems for the Hellenic Coast Guard uh, on their ships uh, for primarily uh, the refugee crisis that they were um, engaging in. I mean, if anyone would remember back in 2015, 2016, uh, into 2017, uh, Greece was ground zero for upwards of 5,000 refugees coming in per day. And they took in close to 2 million refugees with a country that only has 11 million residents. Um, and they were coming in, and, and these ships were critical to, um, you know, you know, rescuing a lot of people that are coming over in Iraq from Syria, from war zones, uh, and just really in distress. And so our job was to provide camera systems to help them do search and rescue efforts. Um, you know, we understood that uh, being an ex-Coast Guard, uh, we knew how important that was. Um, and, uh, you know, we engaged and delivered on that. And part of the things that we learned is, uh, it's like anything else, you, you just don't ship a box and have it open up with our equipment. You, know, you, you want to follow through and make sure it works properly, they're satisfied with it. Um, and uh, we flew out the country and uh, oversee, or saw the installation conducted with them because they didn't have the resources there. Part of this was supported through the EU. Um, but uh, in any type of export activity, it, there are no rules. I mean, uh, the customer changes the rules, and and you have to adapt to it. And uh, we, uh, you know, we contacted our local um, commerce department uh, representatives in Greece during that time, um, and we were there, um, and uh, they were there to help support and you know help us through some of these transactions uh, that we had um, to engage in. But uh, overall, you you have to be nimble and and try to get your um your resources in order ahead of time however 
you know, things can change. You just have to be flexible. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's good to game plan, but when, uh, situations change, you need a new plan. Don't uh, keep thinking that old plan's going to, going to get you over the line. Um, yeah. do you have any questions, uh, that you want to ask Joe? Yeah. We, so Brian, Brian, this is Jonathan. Um, a couple of questions. Let's drill down a little further for our audience members who may be curious about um, how to connect with the initial buyer or foreign partner for NVTS. Um, how did Joe get connected with his initial foreign buyer or buyers? For example, uh, Joe, did you work with the U.S. Commercial Service or another resource provider to get started in exporting? Could you provide a little bit of uh, guidance? We, 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 we did. Uh, thanks, Joe. So, um, so we we attended a, um, a kind of a, a venture seminar and the commerce uh, representative was there uh, and we also engaged with our uh, state commerce department and what we learned i mean being in rhode island a small state so everybody kind of knows each other but we found out that you know rhode island in your state they'll have a commerce department and typically they work closely with uh, uh, U.S. Commerce uh, to engage in uh, new business development for small business, and uh, we found that um, you know reaching out to them helped us uh, you know take the first steps um, into you know seeing what assets were available. You, you're not alone. I mean, you, you, there's there's a plethora of resources out there. I can go through those later, but I. I, I that was our initial step: is to reach out to the state, our state, and then they connected us with uh, uh, U.S. Commerce, our trade representative, uh, Keith uh, Yatuhashi, and um, it was pivotal in, in the growth of our export business. Is understanding the assets that are available by both your state and uh, federal government uh, located in your state as those representatives. Um, we found that there were so many resources and that we had to take time to kind of absorb it and execute right. on it. Um, right. Well, thanks for highlighting a couple of examples. Um, now, if we change subjects from exporting to the current climate, we find ourselves in, um, in challenges with supply chain issues or interruptions during uh, the period of COVID-19. Have you run into any issues over the last one to two years with the COVID-19 pandemic? And how, is it, how has it affected your business, including export transactions? And how have you managed this challenging period? Well, I think I can speak for everybody here that no one knew how to handle this when it first came out. We were um, really concerned that um, our, our code pipe that we had built up was going to evaporate during COVID. So uh, selling uh, camera systems that are applied for shipboard applications, thermal visible camera systems and driver vision systems for armored vehicles, we weren't sure what to do. So we um, pursued uh, you know, another product that was related to COVID, the fever detection with thermal imaging. And um, we thought that maybe this would be uh, you know, the, something that we could support because it was right in our wheelhouse. Uh, we reached out to our you know, state and, you know, and U.S. Commerce uh, to you know, bring them in on our ideas. Um, and um, we were able to secure a small grant for that, uh, being open up to um, you know, both uh, PPP and uh, connections with grants, which assisted us, and that that actually got us through uh, the initial stages of it. And then things started to settle in. We try to find our stride. And regarding the the supply chain issues, we actually didn't find an issue with that initially. So the the parts and materials we were supplying uh, initially were still in the pipe. Um, and uh, but we knew we were trying to 
trying to navigate who had what and trying to increase our suppliers. So immediately we shifted gears and looked for additional suppliers just as a backup, but initially it didn't impact. Thank you for that. And I believe um, we have one more question before going to the audience. Um, the chat feature, we are accepting questions in the chat, but there's one more question um, for Joe. Um, So Joe, uh, before we turn it over to the audience for their questions, um, any additional international resources that you'd like to recommend? Uh, you did talk about federal and state resource providers, uh, but drawing on your own experiences as an exporter, um, you probably, you've encountered successes, you've encountered some challenges. What other recommendations for our audience members uh, who may be new to export, and um, and or beginning exporters well i i can't speak i, I have the highest regard for the u.s commerce they, they, this, uh, the, the people and the staff here in particular in Rhode Island are, are have been wonderful to us um i would say reach out to you, your state u.s commerce i mean your state commerce department and then from there also your u.s commerce representative director um ours is keith yeah yeah um uh Yatuhashi, and he's been an invaluable resource to us and so connect with them first they're there they're available um and they'll spend the time with you and you know they're there to grow the, your business with you so um you feel like you have an extended team so that's number one um take advantage of the uh the programs gold key which we did ips international partner search which we do too and also the trade which we did also, which uh, enables uh, you to get into, uh, have a group of uh, companies go into country with your specific product and meet uh, potential uh, customers. Um, and also go to the commercial specialist in the country, which is available through your U.S. Commerce representative domestically, and they have eyes and ears on the ground and they further can assist you. So I, I encourage that. And also the o ODC for our business, which is the Office of Defense Cooperation, which we're connected through US, U.S. Commerce tools, which we've been using the last couple of years, and that's been invaluable to us. Um, I would say, uh, you know, with the International Partner Search and Gold Key Service, they'll get you connected with uh, um, sales agents and distributors, which are your key asset on the ground. I mean, don't try to go it alone. Use the a sales agent and a distributor uh, because they will take care of the shipping, the tariffs, and you sell a net planted price and that's it. So a lot of that stuff will go away in problems or potential problems if you use an agent or a distributor. Um, and that's uh, a lot of the country's customers, uh, the end users like to deal with that and sometimes that's required. Um, we use the uh, go to the U see where there's a show where there's a U.S. pavilion that uh, lends itself to your uh, product, and in the event that there's space that open, uh, you'll be a U.S. company inside the U.S. pavilion at that trade show. There's a, usually a key location, and it doesn't get that. And also use the uh, small business um, pavilions that are at these independent trade shows too. It's a small business front and center in high profile position uh, at these trade shows where you can be uh, a presence where you normally wouldn't have that resource available to you. Um, and um, typically the state, again, uh, the impact that state and local uh, and the federal agencies work, work together to grow small business in the state. So th both those resources work hand in hand. Um, but the things that also use are the step funding, which is important, which is a which is a federally funded program to get back for trade shows, um, translators, brochures in different languages. Uh, we've used those. It's your state MEP office, uh, manufacturing extension partnerships. Uh, we have a local organizations for our business, like Sanidia is one of ours for defense. Um, SBA offers loans and marketing and translators. Uh, 
and um, and last, get a hold of your local congressmen and and, and, and and senators, and let them know you exist. Tell them you know what things you're encountering and the problems that they do, and they're there to help you too, or their representatives inside there. And we certainly used ours, and they've been invaluable. So it's uh, the U.S. There's nothing like it here in the U.S. It's about a collection of resources a small business has to, to be able to sell internationally. And uh, you know the, the the representatives that are in country are there to help too, and they're a big uh, been a big asset to us. Well. Well stated and a great list of tips. Thanks for sharing uh, exporting tips and strategies and uh, what you said about identifying an intermediary such as an agent or distributor um, and tapping into the great resources such as the U.S. Commercial Service to expand your business overseas and in the state level. And of course, step funding is available uh, through the state uh, international trade office uh, and, and in many states throughout the U.S. Uh, so that's another valuable resource uh, to consider the STEP program. So with that being said, uh, thanks for taking our questions. We'll turn it over to Earl to check with our audience members. Uh, and uh, Earl, uh, passing it back to you. Okay, thank you very much. So I'm looking at the questions for Q&A. I think we got another one came in. Uh, is Okay, is my thinking correct? All of uh, all of these benefits are in available through joining NVSBC. No, you don't have to join NVSBC to, to get these benefits. You could go directly to Brian and Jonathan and they could be able to help you out. But it's good you want to be a member if you can. <laughs> We're still waiting for more questions. Hey, uh, Brian and Jonathan, anything you want to add before uh, we end this session? Uh, I would just th thanks again Earl, for, uh, you know, creating a platform, supporting veterans and, and having us on today. Um, I would echo uh, folks, if you generally, uh, what, generally, if you're new to exporting or, or just new to business, uh, yeah, you're trying to trying to develop a business. There's more to it. Yeah, you know your product or service. There's more, to, and um, Joe will tell you that there's there's more to that. You, know, you got to do some more. But as he echoed and, and others on this call, you know, you're not alone. Um, and if you're not even, let's say for the U.S. commercial service, you're not ready to export. Will Jonathan and or I contact our offices or our colleagues and, and all of our all the offices of, uh, around the nation? They have they will provide you resources like, um, if, if you don't know, the Veteran Business Outreach Centers, the VBOX, another tentacle of the SBA. SBA has SCORE. These are retired um, men and women uh, in the professional setting or were in the professional setting, uh, EOC, uh, CEOs, COOs, uh, CFOs, and so on and so forth. Another tentacle of SBA to be out, that's out there to help you. Um, and again, uh, those resources, depending on where you are, there's help, I guess and there's tools and uh we're there to just keep kind of inching you forward even if you feel resistance right something new if it's selling abroad or just opening up a company we understand it however we're, you're not alone uh jonathan anything to add sir yes yes thanks brian nice to be on today's platform um, with you and to learn more about vetsco global the u.s commercial service and i enjoyed uh, getting joe jansen's perspective great to hear an export case study um, and give us that private sector perspective. Uh, to um, support what Brian said, definitely reach out to us no matter where you are in this international business development cycle because we're here to provide a roadmap and steer you in the right direction. So even if you're not quite ready for an XM authorization, such as export credit insurance, understandable, but the MWOB team, the team I'm on, minority women, veteran owned businesses, and business owners with disabilities, feel free to reach out. We'll set up a 20, 30 minute consultation and uh, take it from there. So consider us a resource, US Commercial Service and Exim Bank. And thank you to our audience members, our veterans, uh, and um, appreciate your time and, and tuning in today to learn more about 
international trade resources. Uh, and thanks, Earl, for hosting us in VSBC. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, just one more reminder. The slides and recording will be to you on Monday. Because I'm still getting questions. I got a couple of private emails. Like, when I'm getting the slides, I'm going to be recording. Monday. So I know it's a lot of information. I know you're dying to get this information. I will try to get to you. I will try to get to you by Friday, but Monday, no later than Monday. Um, so thank you for joining us. I hope you join us next week. Um, we have another exciting episode of uh, Charlie Mike. We have the Department of Navy. We have the Navy Director for Small Business. Let me speak with you, with you next week. So until then, if you want to get a hold of me, you call, contact me at earl.morgan at nvsbc.com that that org or if you want to talk to brian and john directly we, i will have the contact information in that email you could talk to them directly because apparently all of you are quite shy you don't want to answer you don't want to ask any questions so that's okay that's good <laughs> okay so jonathan brian joseph thank you so much for taking the time out to educate us on export services so again you guys take care and I'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Pleasure.